Hey guys, my name is AP, and today we will be adding a transformation matrix to our textured model. So what a transformation matrix is, is it basically allows us to change the position, change the size of it, and allows us to rotate the model itself. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a class that holds all of our math in it, because this is not the only matrix we need to make a a true 3D experiment, 3D experience. This is just to help us move the model around. And next, we're going to be adding the projection matrix in the next tutorial. But for right now, we're just going to be adding the the uh, uh, transformation matrix. So we're going to create a new package, and it's going to be called engine.maths. And in this path, uh, in this package, uh, we're going to be adding a class called matrix maths because there's going to be more than just one just one math so we're going to be creating a function called create transformation matrix so public it's going to return a matrix and it's going to create transformation matrix there we go and import matrix and so what we need to do is we need to take in three vector 3Fs for the position, the rotation, and the scale. So we're going to take vic, uh, vector 3F uh, translation, vector 3F rotation, and vector vector 3F for scale. So we can affect uh, all of the aspects of it and import vector 2 so what we need to do is we need to create a identity matrix so that's not that hard we just need to do matrix for F uh, matrix and that's going to be a, a new matrix for F not with two M's and we're going to do dot uh, identity identity there we go so what this does, it returns a identity matrix for us. So now we need to create, now we need to change that matrix to add our uh, translate. So we're going to do matrix dot translate, translate, and it's going to take in uh, three uh, float, array, uh, float things. So it's going to be translation dot x translation.y and translation.c so let me add dots in there and that's it for the translation now we're gonna add a rotation which is basically the same thing we're gonna do matrix dot uh, rotate affine and it's gonna take in two uh, three float arrays so it's gonna be rotation X, rotation Y, rotation Z. So dot Z, dot Y, and dot X, and then add a semicolon at the end. And we're going to do matrix dot scale, which is, uh, we're going to put it, so we're going to do scale dot X, scale dot Y, and scale dot Z. And then we're just going to return matrix we could all put this at one line but it just makes it a lot more cluttered so I'm just gonna there so now we have our first matrix ma uh, function so we're, let's go to uh, models and we're gonna create a new class called it uh, model entity so we do model entity because this is where we're going to hold our mo our model, which is going to be a texture model, and all of our its rotation stuff. So the first thing we got to do is we got to create a couple variables. We got to create a texture model, texture model, model. We got to uh, hold three vectors, vector three F position, angle, and scale, and import vector, of course, what, vector 3f, 
Let me try just one so I can import it. There we go. Import. Then it wants angle and scale. There we go. And let's create a constructor, which you can easily do by right clicking, source, generate constructor using fields. And use all these and just get rid of the super. So now I'm going to go to my GitHub and I'm going to go to the entity code, which I'm going to put in uh, the description. And I'm going to copy and paste all of this. The reason why I'm just doing this right off the bat is because I've done it previously and it's a lot of code that's a lot of copying and pasting. So I'm just going to copy it because I wouldn't want, if you want to write it that's fine. But basically it's setting each individual one because I prefer that over setting the entire thing at once. And so we have to get scale X, Y, Z and to get rotation X, Y, Z and set get position. And then we have the add, and then we have uh, get model and set model. And so we need to add another function called get uh, translation matrix, which is get trans. It's actually going to return a matrix for F, matrix for F, get translate uh, transformation formation matrix. And it doesn't need anything to go in. So what this is going to return is this is going to return a um, um, mat matrix maths dot. Oh, I think this is yeah. This has to be a static. And we got to do matrix maths dot create transformation matrix position angle scale. So now with this, we can. Uh, start uh, drawing our uh, uh, models that are rotated. But first we have to go to our uh, shader and we have to go to vertex shader and we actually have to import it. So this is why I said we needed uniforms so we can uh, interact with our uh, interact with the shaders through our Java code. So we're gonna add a uniform which just get rid of the scale uniform you don't need anymore because in the transformation matrix, that's where uh, you get it. So we do uniform mat for for matrix and a uh, transfor transformation. And now how we're going to implement this to actually make the transformation is we're just going to multiply it by our position. So we're going to do transformation times uh, position, which is a vec four. So it should. Oh, Make sure that's the same as that or you will get errors. So let's get to the basic shader and actually do it. I'm freaking recording a video! You gotta yell in my video? There we go. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Now we have to bind the transformation matrix uh, to our shader program. So in get all uniforms, excuse me, sorry. So we have to actually make a location before we, sorry again, before we uh, get the uniform. So we're going to do private int uh, transformation location. And in here, in the get all uniforms, we're going to set that equal to super uh, dot get uniform. And the name is what we put in the vertex shader, which is transformation. So just in case I misspell it, I'm just going to copy that and paste it in here. So I don't change any of it. And we're going to create a public method like we did for scale that loads a transformation matrix into it. So we do public void load transformation matrix and it's going to take in a matrix for f and matrix and that's just going to load so we're going to do a super dot load matrix uniform transformation location uh, matrix and in here actually um wait 
Oh yeah, we have an import that. Import that. Uh, so in here, I have actually changed some code in the shader program. In here, um, we don't have to flip the buffer. So uh, get rid of buffer dot flip because in matrix we don't have to flip that. If it, if you leave it in there, then the it's not going to show. So now that we have loaded it, and now that we can get it from a model entity, let's go into the renderer. And we're going to copy this. And we're just going to put it right here. So we're just going to say render model entity. And it's going to take in a model entity. Entity in entity entity and there we go and so now you see some errors in the code uh, so now that we have mo uh, entity instead of that let's actually replace model with entity and after that do entity dot get model dot and do that for everything that needs it so dot get model and dot get model so now we're actually going to add some more code and we're going to do it before we draw the elements so what we're going to do is we need to access the shader from the renderer so we're going to create a constructor that uh, creates that stores in a shader so private basic shader shader uh, public oh, crap public uh, uh, render it's gonna take in a basic shader I'm gonna set that equal to it's that so sh uh, this dot shader is equal to shader and then import basic shader there we go and not pub <laughs> public and with now that we have stored a shader, we can go down here and actually load in uh, a transformation matrix. So, load transformation matrix. I'm just gonna fix that correctly real quick and send basic shader transformation. And in the renderer, we're gonna do entity dot get transformation matrix. So now all of this should be done. We should be now able to close all this out and go to main and actually add some code. So with this, we are going to go here. We have to actually put shader in the render, so let's put that. And now what we have to do next is we have to create a model entity. So after we create the model, we're going to create a model entity and call it entity. And set that equal to a new model entity. And then with this import model entity, we have to put the model, which is model. We have to put the position, which we want it to the left, so we can test out if our transformation matrix is working, which is minus one, zero, zero. We don't want it to be rotating, so we're just going to vector 3f vector. And we're going to set all this to zero, so just stay still. And we're actually going to uh, scale the uh, y value so it looks a bit short, but all the stuff stays the same. So it would be 1, 0.5f, 1. So let's import vector. And yeah, so now we have the ent entity created. Let's go down here and actually do something with it. So instead of render texture model, we're actually going to render uh, a model entity an entity. So, right now what we have should basically, oh, S, sorry. This should stay the same. Vector 3F int, int, int. What? <laughs> but this is the same thing. Oh, new. That's what's happening. New. There we go. And so it basically nothing should happen. Or yeah, that should happen. Uh, we have it's moved to the left. It's a bit shorter than what it was, but everything else is the same. 
So now to test that it changes on the fly, we need to actually uh, bind, uh, load our transformation matrix every frame. So load transformation matrix. Well, actually, no, we already did that. Sorry. And actually, so we before we bind the shader, we're going to do entity dot add position x. Let's do zero point zero two f. Actually, let's make make it able to where we move. So, let's do if uh, window dot get is key down is key down, and we'll do glfw dot glfw key a key a. Let's do entity to add position x minus zero zero point two zero point zero zero f two f. And we got to import GLFW. And let's just copy and paste this for the other three buttons. <laughs> so, a, so we have D, we have W, we have S. So this, for D, it should be plus, And for Y, go, for going up, it should be positive. And for S, it should be negative, because that's what GL likes. And there we go. So if we run this, we should have what we had before, but now we can move it very slowly. And so actually I'm going to make that a bit faster by just doing that. Actually, let's, I'm not going to keep this size. So I was about to say make a variable, but I'm just, that's a waste of time because I'm going to be getting rid of this soon. Uh, so, okay, that's a bit fast, but that's, there we go. Now we can actually, uh... There we go. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, I think I know why. It's not is key down. It's is key uh, pressed. There we go. It should only do it once, but we can change that. I mean, it shouldn't really make a difference. Like, it sh we have to click instead of. So, it, it's fine. We have a moving thing, and so actually let's add some rotation to it. So let's, let's just keep the A and D, and let's just do down so we can actually see it. You can have so much fun with this. Is key down, is key down, AD, add rotation Y, rotation instead of X, Y, and there we go, rotation Y. Rotation Y. And this should be good. So let's do this. Oh, you can't see how let me put it in the center. There we go. So with this, we should be able to change how this rotates so we can go back and forth and there we go uh z nothing nothing with the z-axis doesn't work because we have an add projection matrix so we just have a 2d rotating texture there we go Woo that should be good so this is it for this tutorial and i hope to see you in the next tutorial bye